My name is Brian Goshadra. I'm the Chief of Cardiovascular Imaging here at Mass General in Boston. I'm also the President-Elect for the Society of Cardiovascular CT. Coronary artery calcium CT is done without contrast and can be done in about 10 minutes. One of the things CT scanning is very good at is seeing calcium. Calcium is a final common pathway of a lot of pathologic processes in the body. Plaques that rupture and rapidly occlude an artery can cause myocardial infarctions or heart attacks and cardiovascular disease. These little specks of calcium are a tip of iceberg phenomenon, showing us only part of a plaque. The test shows not just whether it's present, but also can see how much and quantify the calcium with an Agatston score. The score is counted if the deposits of calcium are over a certain size, a certain density, and a certain number of pixels that are contiguous. It is of course possible to have a tiny fleck of calcium that's below the threshold to detect or count. Detectable calcium goes into the algorithm and the results go from zero, as in none detected, to a minimum unit of one and up to many, as many as thousands. There are many things that make a calcium score invalid or not applicable. For instance, prior revascularization, such as the presence of a coronary stent or coronary bypass surgery. Also motion artifacts or any kind of artifact where the imaging interpreter believes there's an erroneous value being recorded, such as might result from a pacemaker or other hardware. Most importantly, it's really not relevant to use this test in those patients with prior stents and bypasses because we already know that they have the disease. A question I often get, is it possible to have coronary artery atherosclerosis yet have a calcium score of zero? The answer is yes, but it's thought to be rare. Conversely, it is possible to have a very high calcium score and not have obstructive disease in the coronary arteries. Again, the answer is yes. The calcium score doesn't tell you the whole story. A large part of plaque is beyond the calcium. It's non-calcified plaque. It's thrombi, or it's a plaque that ruptures. We don't see any of that with a calcium score. We also don't see any of the info on alternative obstructive diseases in the coronaries, such as spontaneous coronary artery dissections. And most coronary anomalies and structural lesions will be missed by a calcium score. So how do we use the test and the score? First, most of the data favors the more is worse concept. It's been studied in large populations, and so we have normative databases to plug in demographic information and risk factors, like blood pressure, diabetes, or high cholesterol, and determine if a patient uh, has a high risk uh, based on the calcium score. This test tells you that you are at, above, or below the risk predicted by only the clinical factors. For instance, in a younger patient like myself, it would be abnormal to have even a small amount of calcium. Even a very low but positive calcium score puts me at a very high percentile risk versus my peers. Conversely, in say my octogenarian father, a very low calcium score is very unlikely and it would put him at a lower risk versus peers. Despite this, the odds of him having detectable calcium are pretty high. And so most databases have been collected in patients in the age range of 45 to 70 years. So when should you order this test? How should you use the results? The best indication is for a patient that's asymptomatic with no indication of an acute danger, but that you want to look at the risk. You can collect family history, social history, a few measurements uh, like blood pressure, hypertension history, lipid measurements, ask them whether they smoke to assess risk. There are great calculators like the ASCVD score calculator informed by lots of data using just these clinical and biomarker risk factors. If the risk comes out low, there's really no need to test and they probably do not need a statin therapy for primary prevention. A high risk score based on clinical factors, regardless of what the calcium score scan shows, indicates that you should start the statin anyway, because that's just good medicine. So coronary artery calcium scanning helps the most for intermediate risk patients. If you're on the fence and the patient really isn't thrilled about taking a pill every day for the rest of their life, it can help us to tell us whether they have atherosclerosis. If they're asymptomatic but have atherosclerosis, it clearly shows you and the patient their disease. You have actual proof that they will benefit from statin therapy. As a physician, you're confident that you're treating the right patient. A couple of caveats. We don't have a lot of evidence that this is highly reproducible with precision, and thus there's conflicting data on whether the values change over time. Some studies show that calcium scores can go up once on a statin. We know that calcium is one of the more stable parts of the whole iceberg that is plaque. So progressively elevating calcium scores may or may not be a concerning signal. And once it's there, it's unlikely to just go away, especially when you get to certain thresholds. In fact, it's almost unheard of at certain thresholds. So rechecking won't necessarily change your management. 
There's no advisement to do this repeatedly over time unless you start at zero. And maybe you want to look again in a few years to confirm things after that. Note also that sometimes we already have the information for free. If you have a chest CT that's previously done for other reasons, we might be able to pick up on coronary calcium. It's not going to be as precise as a dedicated agates and calcium score, there's no ECG gating, but imagers are pretty good at stratifying things. If we see a large amount of calcium, especially if it's unexpected, you can assume that to be a high calcium score. That person is not going to benefit from repeated imaging if we already know that they have calcium. Offer them a statin and encourage them to modify their lifestyle. And you must know that you need to assess the potential for missing things when you're not actually looking at the full CT angiogram. If it's a subtle finding, or if it's just not certain, you may want to quantitate it and capture it very precisely. Calcium score tells you nothing about coronary obstruction, and we can't use it in symptomatic patients, or in place of a catheterization, the way we can with a CT angiogram, which it tends to perform better than a stress test when used appropriately. Calcium scoring is really just an assessment of risk. Coronary artery calcium CT helps us determine a patient's level of risk for long-term disease and the necessity for medical management. The best use case is for intermediate risk patients that are asymptomatic to help them decide on preventive therapy. Hi, I'm Eric Williamson, past president of the Society for Cardiovascular CT. Thanks very much for taking the time to view this video from SCCT's Referring Physician series regarding the appropriate application of cardiac CT. I hope you found it helpful for your specific practice as well as for your patients. Please join us for other lectures from this six-part series. I'm confident they will be equally as enlightening. See you then.